I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Today, we'll break down more parts of the Deontay Johnson trade, which brings in a new cornerback, but asks big questions about what is Omar Khan's plan for the wide receiver position. That and more here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. More on them later. So, now that we've had some time to digest what is what happened to, in, in, uh, earlier this week with the Steelers, one, signing Patrick Queen, and two, of course, trading away Deontay Johnson to get back cornerback Dante Jackson from the Carolina Panthers. I wanted to focus on specifically what is going to have to be the plan at wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Because as of now, the Steelers have George Pickens, who's clearly a number one type of wide receiver. Uh, and I think that you're know, going into next season, barring any major move that would change anything, uh, you know, he would be the number one wide receiver. But behind him, you got Calvin Austin, Miles Boykin, and they also signed Marquez Calloway, uh, you know, a, a Saints cast off uh, a player who would be another low level wide receiver. But there's no clear number two receiver on this team let alone maybe even a number three. Calvin Austin, you have to, I'd say you'd have to stretch to make a number three wide receiver. Maybe if he gets used better this year, that becomes a factor. But right now, the Steelers need at least two wide receivers to be added to this roster. That can come via the draft or come via free, via free agency. And ideally from both, one free agent, one draft pick. But you guys remember when I was talking about the combine, like, hey, the Steelers are talking to a lot of these big name wide receivers. Like they were talking to Romeo Dunza, uh, Brian Thomas uh, out of out of uh, LSU, Lad McConkey, uh, Roman Wilson, all these guys that are slated to go first, second round. I'm like, that's an indication they're hardly look they're looking hard at wide receiver, and that was another reason I was like, mm, they, maybe Deontay Johnson's trade is possible. I don't know, and I wouldn't commit to saying it was definitely going to happen. But I think that you can see that's how the cookie crumbled. And if we had followed those breadcrumbs, we would have gotten to Deontay Johnson. You guys can tell I'm hungry. Um, but uh, point being, the Steelers had this plan in, in place where they probably wanted to reset how they were doing, handling things at wide receiver. For one, um, they know that with George Pickens' situation, this will be his third year. After his third year, he's going to want to – you're going to have to start talking about a new contract to keep him long term. And – you're not going to pay him wide receiver one money while you're also paying Deontay Johnson receiver one money. So most likely with this being Deontay Johnson's, this would have been Deontay Johnson's last season with the Steeler Steelers on his current contract. You would have had to decide whether you want to resign him or not. And moving on from him and finding something else kind of makes sense. We'll get to Dante Jackson in the cornerback part of this later, but I think that's the big thing here is that the Steelers have to figure out what does their, what does their wide receiver group want to look like do they want to have another uh, another guy that's like George Pickens or do they want to have a, another De Deontay Johnson type of player who's much smoother and getting getting open their routes getting into their breaks and and being and get, being great at getting open and getting space to create an easier target for the quarterback because listen whether it's Russell Wilson Kenny Pickett or whoever also shout out Mason Rudolph he's now with the Titans um uh, you know, whether whether it's any of those guys, having a guy like that makes their job so much easier when they when they are able to just to know that, hey, that guy, nine out of ten, nine, not, not even nine out of ten, maybe like 48 out of 50 times, that guy's going to be open in one on one coverage if that's what the, what the read is over there. And I can trust that that's kind of who Deontay Johnson was. And we talked about that even going into last season where, yes, his drops were an issue. Yes, him not scoring a touchdown the year before was an issue. But all the people who study routes and people getting open and separation and things like that, he was, if not the best right up there, like top five receivers in the NFL and doing that. So that is a big thing to replace. That is not some easy task. And I know some Steelers fans want to be like, oh, we won't miss him. Um, if they don't replace him with someone that can 
do something remarkable at wide receiver, you will miss Deontay Johnson, which is why I think Omar Khan does have something cooking in the background with a move to be made. Now, what could that move be? Well, there's a few things out there that you could do right now as far as free agency. The Chargers just cut Mike Williams. He'll be someone that everyone's looking at, but Mike Williams is 30 years old. He's never been a superstar wide receiver, and he's often been hurt. And I feel like the only way that the Steelers, if they get Mike Williams, that I would say that's a good move is if they get him for cheap and not paying him a whole lot of money. And I think that there's probably going to be a team somewhere that wants to pay him a decent amount of money to come and be one, be, be a player for them. So I, I don't see that as working out. Other guys they could look at, Marquise Brown, Michael Thomas, Odo Beckham, Hunter Renfro, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd, the guy that we've been talking about a lot, K.J. Osborne, Marquez Scott Valdez scantling among other, other players. But those are all some like, big names that you, that, that, that you can go through and say, like, okay, they, they can make sense. Now, again, Tyler Boyd makes the most sense. This is a guy who'd be a veteran, wouldn't cost you a whole lot of money, would be able to come to town, and you know he's a hometown guy, and he could be the veteran that kind of sets the room straight and, and gives you an attitude. I can see him being a solid number three wide receiver. I don't think he's a number two wide receiver anymore in the NFL. I think that he wants to be paid like a number two wide receiver, but I really think he would be a number, a good number three for the Steelers. Now, uh, that's kind of where I think a lot of these guys are. Hunter Renfro would be a good slot, good third option, right? Uh, you know, you look at guys like Curtis Samuel, Michael Thomas, th those are all in those rounds. Marquise Brown, if you want to, if you want to go, go that route. Um, but I, I think this, the, the bottom line is that whoever, if the Steelers sign one of these guys, they need to then go and get another guy in, in the draft in the first three rounds. And we'll talk about that with Mock Draft Monday uh, next week when we start doing that. And I'm probably going to make the – there's a shout-out for all those who look forward to Mock Draft Monday contest that we do here. You're going to be probably drafting a wide receiver in the first or second round. And we've already done that exercise kind of, but this is going to be different knowing that Deontay Johnson is not there anymore because they need at least two guys added to this room before this, before the, this, this season begins. So – I look at that and I think like what needs to be your emphasis and what kind of wide receivers do you want to get? Because George Pickens, you know, you know, George Pickens, combat catch guy. He's fast. He can get down the field. He can go up and win jump balls with the best of them, but he doesn't get separation. Do you want another guy like that? Do you want a, a route, a, a guy who gets, who gets good separation, but maybe isn't the fastest. Do you want to get a guy who does both? Do you want to go and get a top level wide receiver, which is, isn't off the board when you're the Steelers. They also talked to, I think, they believe they talked to Adnai Mitchell. The, that's a guy who's going in the first round. You don't talk to those guys unless you're seriously looking at them. And again, it wasn't just him. It was several first round wide receivers. The Steelers were in, you know, had formal and informal sit downs with either at the combine or at the senior bowl. So with that being known to me, that says the Steelers, they might be looking at trying to get a, um, another playmaker, a, a playmaker who's a decent uh, a, a decent playmaker, a number their number three option uh, in the in the in free agency, but then maybe getting that rookie who can be a really good player in the in the in the draft, and that would be a unique position to be in because then by the time that rookie's in their second year, most likely you're finding a way to pay George Pickens, and you can give him a two to three year deal, and then and 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 not commit to him in a long time, and then at the end of George Pickens' deal. If this top level wide receiver you've drafted in the 2024 draft that they're about to have, if he's ready to become the number one or Pickens ready to, become, to, to continue being the number one, you have options there. And in meanwhile, if you're hit, you hit on that pick, then you just have two really good wide receivers with a good veteran in Tyler Boyd, along with you know a progressing Calvin Austin. That's a good way to approach this. But how will that look in Arthur Smith's offense? I want to talk more about that in a second here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you this show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app that you need to download right now to your phone because it gives you a chance to buy tickets for your favorite events without it being stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for whether it's a, a sporting event, concert, comedy, theater event, anything near you. Game Time is most likely going to help you find the great tickets for it. And they give you killer deals even on last minute tickets, even if you're up to an hour late after the event and you still want to find a way to get in. Game Time will help you get in with, the, with their best price guarantee that can't be beat. When you download the Game Time app, you can book tickets at any point in time, and you look at you look at the flash deals that are available. They have so many different options for you, and they give you the best of both worlds because you'll see one, the tickets are real; you're not getting scammed. You'll see the view from those tickets in the Game Time app, and then two, you're gonna get the best prices. They give you amazing discounts, and they promise you that they're gonna give you the best prices because they say if you find tickets in the same section and row for less somewhere else. 
uh, for the same event, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference of those prizes. That's how confident they are in their in their prices being the best. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On that for twenty dollars off your first purchase, or go to their website, GameTime.co. Terms and conditions apply. Create an account and redeem code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N, all capital letters, all one word, and you'll get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our discussion about the Steelers offense. One thing I think that is important to, to look at here when we're talking about wide receivers is that the understanding of what a wide receiver is in the Steelers offense, I, I think, is going to have to be very different from what it's been, at least for now. Um, when I say that, I think I, I, I ask you to go back and think back at how you've looked at Steelers wide receivers for the last, let's say, 10 years. You go back 10 years, that's when Antonio Brown was emerging in the NFL. And, you know, Steelers fans knew he was really good, but that was like, we're 2014, that's right around when everyone was like, oh, so that guy is a, bi- a bad dude. He's a beast. And so that's, you know, that became Antonio Brown. They brought in Martavis Bryant, Juju Smith Schuster. And then that history worked, that worked out the way it did with Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant leaving. Juju sticking around, Deontay Johnson, James Washington. Uh, and now you have George Pickens and, and how it's gotten here. But the Steelers developed this reputation with guys like Heinz Ward and guys like, you know, Antoine Randall and eventually, you know, guys like Antonio Brown and Mike Wallace and Emmanuel Sanders for being really good at drafting wide receivers. And they were, they were getting guys that were, that were producing for them at high levels. Mike Wallace at one point, I remember like, I think it was maybe like 2011 or 2012, that people were comparing him to Calvin Johnson, which was a little much at the time, but people legitimately were because he was putting up insane numbers with Ben Roethlisberger. And then Emmanuel Sanders, a really good player for the Steelers, but never matured into the number one role that they were hoping he would. Um, and then went on to win a Super Bowl with the Broncos. I think he won a Super Bowl with the Broncos, but um uh, and then eventually Antonio Brown worked out to be the best wide receiver in football for the entire decade. Like it was just, that was an insane run that you probably don't ever get that again. If you're, if you're, if you're a Steelers fan. Um, but all that being said, um, I look at, uh, I look at how this, this is this team right now with the way it's constructed. You think back to when Antonio Brown emerged and Mike Wallace and all those numbers, that was Ben Roethlisberger's prime. That was when he was a developed veteran. He wasn't the he wasn't the young kid anymore. That was just there, you know, saying, "Hey, I'm here to not lose the game, make the occasional big play, but let James Harrison, Troy Polamalu, and this offensive line and let let this team win with with with, with those factors." The team had to win with Ben Roethlisberger being a big factor in those days, and they won plenty of games. You go back, I mean, they were they were crushing teams at times. They, that offense, the killer beats, they were a threat. But that's not this offense. Even with Russell Wilson coming in, a Super Bowl champion, a nine-time Pro Bowler, uh, he's just he's not there. And maybe he was there years ago, and maybe he can get to flashes of that again. But the Steelers, I don't think, are dummies coming in and thinking, oh, yeah, they're going to be throwing the ball. They got Arthur Smith, an offensive coordinator, for a reason. This team, they want it to be a balanced attack with the run game leading the way, with the offensive line still being the stronger feature, feature, feature here. And that's another reason why I still think there's, you know, there, there's other moves coming here from the Steelers. I think they still need to address offensive tackle, make it so that they have a right tackle so Broderick Jones can move to left. Um, and Dan Moore can become a swing tackle that, that that's a backup option for them. And they still need a center. And if you do those two things, I think you got a good, an offensive line that can be among the best in the NFL, as long as you do well with the, with those two additions. Um, but then if you have that, how important does having three great wide receivers or great options at wide receivers become? Because then you're going to be saying, okay, where's the ball going most in this offense? Pat Frymuth's still going to be in the equation. He's going to be a major factor in this game, in this game, especially with Arthur Smith's tendencies to use play action more. And I think that's going to be have to be a big part of this offense. And maybe part of it you use Pat Frymuth more in kind of receiver like roles at times, uh, because 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 of his his athleticism. And uh, and for more on that, you know, with when how that would match with Russell Wilson, I talked with Cody Work of Locked On Broncos for the North Shore Drive podcast on Wednesday. Go check that out. He th- still thinks that Russell Wilson has plenty in the tank and that he could really work well if the Steelers put through the right things around him. Um, but the right things around him might not be loading up this team with all the receivers. Like maybe it isn't 
getting signing 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 a guy and then drafting a guy in the first round. Maybe it's signing a guy that's not too big and then drafting a guy maybe in the second or third round. It's still second round. That's still a great place to draft a wide receiver, especially in this class. But maybe they wait until the third round to get a guy. Maybe even the I, I, I think the fourth round would be way too long to wait. But my point is that the emphasis of this team going moving forward with Arthur Smith, the way that I see this team winning the most of its games, it is dominant up front, which it needs dominant players to dominate up front, which means, you know, a Dallas, uh, you know, uh, not Dallas Turner, the, the, the Alabama offensive tackle. Sorry, I'm in the ACC tournament out here in D.C. So pardon my pardon our dust as we, as we do this on the road here. But um, uh, yeah, Dallas turns the edge rusher. Y'all know who I'm talking about, though. The the the, the offensive tackle from out from Alabama, an Amarius Mims of Georgia, some guy like that who is a a a game changer. J.C. Latham, that's who I was going with Alabama. Um, but if if uh, a game changer for 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 any of those big big tackle options, and there's a few out there. Troy Troy Fatano out of, out of Washington, Talisa Fuaga out of uh, Oregon State. Like like there's there's options out there that you can look at and say, hey, that's a guy's a game changer. And then center as well, Jackson Powers Johnson, Zach Frazier, and frankly, as I had been saying, like I thought that center would be a position that they might actually sign a bigger name in free agency, and then not have to draft as high a player at that position, but that's not what they've done. And most of those centers are now gone, as we talked about with Mark Boli on yesterday's episode. Um, so I look at that and I think, man, this team may still need to invest in the trenches. And that may be part of the problem with trying to align this wide receiver group with a ton of talent that makes them, you know, rival like not the killer bees, but like, you know, they were, they were the fast money crew when you had Wallace Sanders and Brown as your, as your top three options. I don't think that that's necessarily needs to be the strength of this team to win most of its football games. I think this team still needs to find another corner. Dante Jackson solid. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I still think they could use, they, they definitely need help at safety. They might need some other, uh, one more piece at linebacker. If they're not sure about Cole Holcomb's health, um, and, and I think they still need to get younger on the defensive line side. You know, Larry Ogunjobi has not hasn't produced uh, to the level of a $13 million type of player, which is what he's going to cost against the salary cap this year. Cam Hayward is, is, is still Cam Hayward, but will he be Cam Hayward for much longer after this past injury? We'll find out. Keanu Benton's playing well, but I think he needs another partner for the future. Maybe that's, maybe that's Marvin Leal. Maybe he steps up again, but there's, so many reasonable needs that you look across this team. And that's why I'm not hundred percent sure that just overloading wide receiver and going and getting, go and getting your guy that, that you think is the top of the top. I'm not so sure that that is just the automatic thing that the Steelers can do, even with trading away Deontay Johnson. And if they do, what are they doing to fill those other positions? Because again, I think that this team is going to win a lot more by running the football, using play action, making it easier on Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett and the quarterbacks in general. Because again, this this team is built to win in spite of its quarterback, to win with its quarterback managing the games. And if the quarterbacks are good game managers, what helps, what also helps that is playmakers on, on, on offense that can make plays after the catch. Maybe getting a guy who's good at that could be what the Steelers need the most right now. Um, and that's why I do think they'll be looking at wide receivers. But who do they get? We'll be keeping an eye on that. We'll take closer looks at the wide receiver position in the draft moving forward, uh, especially with pro days rolling out as we get to see more numbers of guys who didn't test uh, and guys who did test who are trying to improve their numbers. And then also look at just tape and compare and contrast where certain strengths are uh, versus route runners versus speedsters versus combat catch guys, all those different factors. But what are the Steelers going to do at cornerback? Because, that's still a legitimate question, even with the trade to bring in a Dante Jackson. I had more time to look look him up and, and get a get a feel for where he is in his game and how he'll how he'll work with Joey Porter Jr. and what the Steelers might still need to do. We'll talk about that next here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from your or to other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. 
Robinhood Gold gets you the most that you, for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal inform information, claim is the claim is of, of quarter one for 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% uh, match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our discussions here. I want to flip to cornerback. Because um, with the cornerback with, with the cornerback situation, uh, the Steelers need, need need to find some answers as far as fit, filling out their cornerback room. But Dante Jackson is part of that, and I think it puts the Steelers in a situation where, as going into this free agency period, unless they got a superstar corner like Jalen Johnson or Jerry Sneed, one of the big names at the top, who both have been, you know, Jalen Johnson sticking with the Bears, Jerry Sneed's going to require a trade now. I still feel like, you know, I felt like going into free agency, they had to, they were in position to go get a top corner in this draft class. But uh, the thing about getting that top corner is that that's going to you with with your needed offensive tackle and now at wide receiver. That's it. You know that it's going to be a choice. Where do you want to emphasize things? But the addition of a Dante Jackson, I think it doesn't eliminate the need to add a cornerback. They still need to. But it does put them in position where you, it's like where Kevin Colbert always said for years, they want to be in position on draft day to not have to draft a position in, in, in the first round because of an obvious need, because then you, people can snipe off what you're, what you're trying to do. And then you become more predictable. And then that's how you get got on draft day. Um, that's where the Steelers, I think adding a Dante Jackson kind of positions them to be because you could go in and say, look, our CB1 is Joey Porter Jr., CB2 is Dante Jackson. Maybe they add another nickel corner in free agency at some point that doesn't cost them that much. And you could say, look, we got these three guys, and then Corey Trice and Darius Rush, those guys can develop. We'll see, we'll see where they go. Um, and then you may, and so then, and then you can maybe even draft like a middle to late round cornerback and, and call that. But it wouldn't close the door either on picking the cornerback high because Dante Jackson, as, as, he, as he plays, he's an outside corner. Despite him, he's smaller. He's faster. He's primary played outside corner. When you look at his, look at his career. And that's where I think the Steelers are going to try to put him there. You know, if they try to put him in the slot, that would be an experiment. And I'm not so sure about that, but having a Dante Jackson, it's kind of like putting him in the position where Patrick Peterson or Levi Wallace were in place of, of Joey Porter Jr. this past season. Let's say the Steelers get a corner and they want to get them adjusted to the NFL, or maybe they're the guy that that injured coming in, uh, and, and they and they don't get to start training camp right away. Kind of like how Joey Porter Jr. missed some time with his training camp. Um, th that would give you an option to say, hey, that young corner, he's coming up, but Dante Jackson, he's the veteran. He's going to hold it down. We know that he can be a good veteran in, in, in a defense. Um, and, and I've also said, like Dante Jackson, you know, I'm not entirely impressed, but I, he's a solid corner, and he's, he's I think he's a decent option to be a number two. But if, as I've said before, if the Steelers, for their next era, uh, of this next generation of a core that they're building. Because right now, the core, the core is T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, Mika Fitzpatrick. But T.J. Watt's turning 30. Mika Fitzpatrick's in his late 20s. Cam Hayward is, you know, maybe another year or two out of retirement. You look at you look at those guys, their, their, core, their time of being a core is, is, is running out. You need a new young core to come in, and you got pieces for it, right? Alex Highsmith, mid mid twenties, mid to late twenties, he's doing he's he's doing all right um, for, for for you right now. Keanu Benton, really good rookie year. Joey Porter Jr., really good rookie year. There's pieces there to be part of that, and now even Patrick Queen, your addition there, he's only twenty four years old. He can be part of that. But what could really put this team together and put this defense together, and maybe even put them in an elite category, is if Joey Porter Jr. continues and rises and becomes a top corner in the league that's right respected and known by everyone as a top corner in the league. And then you get another one just like him across from him. And Dante Jackson, isn't that he's a solid corner who will occasionally get beat deep and he'll give you some, he'll give you some good veteran time out there. But if they go and draft, let's say Cooper DeGene, or Terry Arnold or Quinion Mitchell, I, I'm not saying those guys will all be there at 20 because 
some of them are going to go because this is a really good cornerback class. But say one of those guys gets selected in the first round by the Steelers, or and it's Rick Straw out of Missouri. He's another guy that I think a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, look at. I, lo I look at him as a pretty strong guy. Maybe you get him in the second round if he falls that far. Uh, but let's say you get another corner this year, and they become another like, oh no, that that guy could take away a number one wide receiver most times in the game. Then you have two pillar cornerbacks to build your defense around where you can be as aggressive as you want with blitzing, with doing everything else. And you don't, because you're trusting, Hey, those guys are going to win in man on man. You still got Minka Fitzpatrick. I still think they need to add another safety to, to replace with Keanu Neal and maybe even Devonte KZ if they don't keep him around. Um, and you still need a slot cornerback, but you have two corners that can take away the two top options for the other team at wide receiver. That's a good place to be in. And I think that that's where, uh, that, that that's where like, Defense is like the Browns defense, like you know, Miles Garrett, huge part of that defense. But Greg Newsom and Denzel Ward, they're a big part of that defense, too, because they can they can line up with guys and contend with them all game long. And if the Steelers can get that with a high draft pick this year, that makes a lot of sense. And in today's NFL, that's cornerbacks, a premium position. So that's where I see that maybe Dante Jackson gives them the room to say, hey, if let's say the guys that you thought were graded to be first round guys that deserve the 20th overall pick Quinion Mitchell, Terry on Arnold, uh, Cooper G let's say they're all gone by there. And you're looking at, mm, we'd like this, but we're going to get a tackle. We're going to get JC Latham. We're going to get Fuaga or Mims or one of those guys. And then you add that guy or a wide receiver now, because that, that that's on the table and you want to revisit corner in the second round uh, or, or get a Mike Sainer still out of Michigan. or One of those type of guys in the second round, like you could do that now and say, Hey, Second round guy, much like Joey Porter, Jr., you can you, we we're we're, we're going to be using you, but there's it doesn't put the pressure on that guy to have to be the starter that 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 learns every single week what it's like to be in the NFL. You can ease him into it with a Dante Jackson, and I think that makes a little bit more sense for what the Steelers' draft plans are at least right now. Things could change. I mean, yesterday y'all saw I recorded with Mark Caboli. Literally, as we hit finished and closed and closed out everything, they traded De Deontay Johnson away, and the whole show I had to redo and make it again. That might happen again tonight. Who knows? They they, they could be they could trade for Legarius Sneed right after this. Please don't do that, Steelers. I'm tired of having to do that. You did that to me with Russell Wilson too. Um, but in all seriousness, that can happen, and the 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 entire uh, the entire ground can change as far as what the Steelers look at. Like, for example, we were talking about Peyton Wilson. They're not probably not drafting a Peyton Wilson or a Jeremiah Trotter in the early rounds with the, with Patrick Queen signed at linebacker and a Landon Roberts and Cole Holcomb, you know, maybe they draft a Cedric, a Cedric Gray from, from, from UNC, maybe in the third round or so, maybe in the fourth round or so that might be their play at linebacker if they did that. But again, all of that changed because of free agency and how it continues to work. So keep your eyes peeled see how things work out, and we'll see how things develop for the Steelers moving forward. But bottom line is cornerback Dante Jackson isn't the answer. I think he's a temporary answer that can be a placeholder at cornerback next to Joey Porter Jr. and still be part of what can be a very good to maybe even great defense if the right things happen in this offseason and the right guys stay healthy next season. Still a lot to analyze there. Still a lot to look at what they what else they could do in free agency, other targets that they have, how things are going to set up for the draft. We'll keep you up to date with all that here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, post-gazette.com. Find me here every day, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. <laughs> 